you can see it's dark I'm actually standing out here in the backyard the only light in the sky is the stars the moon is not even up tonight the reason I'm doing this video guys I want you to look at how dark it is without the aid of electricity all right guys so with the aid of our studio lights here you can actually see me out here now this is a studio light that uses a USB port that we are able to charge with our solar systems all right I want you to think about something so we got a flashlight okay very good flashlights are nice flashlights require batteries during an EMP or a chrono mass ejection getting batteries is gonna be very difficult to do it's gonna be one of those items that are looted very quickly or already pre-purchased if they're still selling we see that during hurricanes all the time here in Florida batteries water toilet paper first thing is always snatched off the shelves imagine when you know the power is not coming back you think batteries are gonna last no now I've showed this light many times this is that San Linky light that we got and we did a review on a while back I like this light this thing's got a great recharge time and it recharges with using USB okay this is something that we can use during an EMP scenario it's very bright all right got multiple settings the reason I like this is because we have the ability to charge this using our solar using our generator if we need to that's why we like these things I want people to start really thinking about how are you gonna see at night you guys can see how dark it is out here without security from light sources you kind of left to us creeping around now in this video guys we're going to show you our night vision things that you can utilize during SHTF with a power down scenario having the ability to see at night to see what is lurking in the dark what is watching you right now is going to give you that step up above any obstacles any enemy anybody that's going to try to take your stuff or to harm you someone sneaking around you'll be able to identify them so we're going to go ahead and get into that as you guys can see we do have plenty of lighting using this this is something that we don't have to worry about storing double a's triple a's things like that we plug it into our solar grid that we have with our trailer and charge this thing up we have hours of light with this and we can see just fine All right guys, so right here we have a 40 amp charge controller. This thing's actually rated at 460 watts. We got 400 watts of panels hooked up to this one particular charge controller. You need to have a charge controller guys. If you don't, you're gonna overcharge your batteries. And at night, this keeps your batteries from bleeding out through the solar panel during the night. So, we got that there this is a decently cheap one I think I paid 30 bucks for this one and we've been using it since uh, December actually longer than that we've had this in longer than that and we've had no problem at all moving on we have our inverter this is a 12 volt pure sine wave inverter 3000 watt this thing here works very well we like I said we are upgrading our cable system this back here we've got that hard, hardwired in this is an extension cord okay it works for the trailer now when we go and wire this all into our home when we build in Wyoming all this stuff's gonna be hardwired in with correct cables and things like that but this thing works very well 
We've never had any issues. This was one of our larger buys as far as one item. For the solar system, we paid 300 and some dollars for this thing. But we've not had any issues at all. It's been working very well. All right, guys, so we are inside our battery box. I went ahead and moved these batteries around, disconnected and stuff like that so you can get a better shot. These batteries are heavy. They're about 76 to almost 80 pounds a piece. These are 100 amp hour batteries, quite large. I haven't had any problem with these. I think we paid like 160 bucks for them at the time we purchased them. Valve regulated sealed lead acid rechargeable AGM battery. Let's see if we can get that closer here. Okay, yeah, that's exhaust fan right there. This is just a uh, plywood uh, box that we have built. And this is where a battery bank sits. So we have 500 amp hours currently of battery storage. Now these cables here are being upgraded. I went and got three aught battery cable. And basically we are redoing all of these even though the amp rating is fine with these for what we draw and what we use. We're going with a heavier duty cable system mainly because we are planning on building a larger battery bank as you can see in the trailer here it's dark the only light as you're seeing is from the camera but thankfully we have solar that's our meter there let's see if i can find a switch here oh yeah turn on some power turn on the fan Okay, so with solar power, we have the ability to have coffee. Yes, we percolate our coffee with our solar power. DVD, small sound system, TV, all works off of our solar grid. Make sure the volume's down so I don't get a copyright strike. There we go. Uh, oh, that's Ion TV. So yeah, solar provides us with power here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what else we run with the solar. Right now we're running our lighting. We, our lighting is 12 volt system. Um, we do have the ability to use AC lights. This plug right here creates our AC current for any appliance that uses AC, runs off our inverter. That's what this plug here is for. You've seen where it was hardwired in. Uh, we also have the additional plugs in the inverter that we can plug in. And then we have our switchboard, which is our DC current. That's our lighting, our exhaust fans, things like that. All right. So what we have here, we have a uh, readout for our shunt. This lets us know what our solar system brings in, draws in, and uses. These are switches that we have installed for a 12-volt system. This is for our lighting and ventilation guys um, that is bathroom light these are other light sources turn these back on exhaust fans we've got multiple things that is refrigerator we've got other vents air conditions um, vents for our solar system we've got all kind of different stuff here guys these are all tied into our 12 volt system all of our lighting and exhaust fans are 12 volts. Also our exterior lights. That we have wired in. Those are all 12 volt systems. Alright guys, so here in the hallway, kitchen storage area, whatever it is you want to call it we have our igloo refrigerators and it's a igloo electric cooler basically what it is you can stand it up or like we have here or you can have it laying down as a nice chest uh, as you can see there's not a whole lot of room in there but it's enough for what we use i mean we just plan things out we'll plan out meals whatever needs to be refrigerated 
We don't keep a lot of stuff in the refrigerator, but it does keep plenty of good stuff in there and keeps it cool. This here will actually keep the temperature 39 degrees below ambient temperature. Luckily for us with our solar, we have the ability to run our air condition during the daytime uh, up to four hours at night. So whatever the temperature is in the trailer, 39 degrees cooler in there. Now this is both 12 volt, which is this one right here. And then we have an AC converter, which is we have an AC box up there that converts our power if we're pulling off the uh, inverter itself or the generator would we'll plug in here. But as of right now, we are running 12 volt system for this, which is running off our battery banks. All right, guys, so yeah, I'm in the mirror, okay. Um, yeah, we stick things, we're, we're in a small space, guys, so yeah, that's where our toothbrushes and wipes razor, whatever goes over there. All right, so this is our hot water tankless shower. All right, we use this for our hot water system for washing dishes and to use the shower, basically. Got a, I had to replace one of these. The other one blew apart um, the hose inside of it. It got dropped and blew, blew out. So I just replaced it. But yeah, this one's off of our propane tank. And a 20-pound propane tank lasts us roughly three months. And that's using it every day for showers for two people and washing dishes and whatever else we need hot water for. Now, as you can see here, we have a generator for backup. Although we have solar, we also have generators. Generators are problematic because of all the working parts you have to keep up with. Oil, air filters, spark plugs, you have to make adjustments over time. But for the short term, these things work very well. Big issue is storing fuel. You've got to have gasoline if you have a gasoline engine or diesel. You have to be able to store this stuff. All right, now this here is a 3200 running watt, 4000 peak watt generator. We never use that much electricity here at the house. Hello, beautiful. Hi, baby. All right, guys, so we are cooking outdoors. Like I said before, we cook using the uh, propane plastic down there, guys. That's what we wrap up the stove with just so it doesn't rust out on us while it's out here. So what do we got today? Organic grass-fed beef and a uh, little bacon, and we'll get, we're gonna top that with cheese later. It's gonna be my world, almost world famous, bacon cheeseburger salad. <laughs> bacon cheeseburger salad. That's so telling me spinach. <laughs> um, yes, actually, and maybe a little salad mix just for some crunch. So guys, we always try to make sure we have multiple ways of cooking food. The fact is, during an EMP event. You're gonna have to be able to cook your food, all right? People have been putting away um, canned meat, meats in the freezers, deep freezers, things like that. Well, you're gonna have to be able to cook it. So we have multiple ways between grills. We have gas grills, we have charcoal grills, but a lot of people's gonna be using wood to start stuff. Now, of course, we talked about using a generator to power a lot of appliances. You're gonna be using a lot of power if you're trying to power up a house stove, which uses 220 volts. So anyway, guys, that is that. Mm -hmm. When the power fails, you're gonna have to start cooking off everything that's in your refrigerator. Your freezer has a little bit longer time. Just depends on how well insulated your refrigerator is, your freezer and everything. But for a refrigerator, you've only got a matter of days at max, maybe two days. And that's if you don't open it up. It's gonna get hot quick and your food's gonna go bad. We've got some steaks right here. This is actually, um, provided by Alaska Prepper. He actually helped donate some money to the channel a while back and he told us to get some steaks and we did. And my wife, being the shopper she is, she got these for $8.62. So we're gonna be cooking steaks tonight. Now, ways to cook, we've showed you the uh, propane grill. We keep those on hand, this is what we usually use. Also charcoal, guys, if you gotta start cooking up your food, how are you gonna do it? Okay, charcoal is an idea, but I'll be honest with you, charcoal is not the best idea. The reason why, how many meals are you gonna be able to cook with this bag of charcoal? Look how much room it takes, okay? Compared to a propane tank, I can get two weeks of cooking out of a one pound propane tank. 
I might be able to get four mils out of that if I'm lucky. All right. And another thing with charcoal is once you've opened it, if it's not stored correctly, it will absorb moisture. All right, and then your charcoal is bad. So we're gonna go and get started on this. If you do not have charcoal, sticks. Build yourself a nice coal bed. I've showed where we cook things in our grill. This is just a little Walmart cheap, I think it was like $20 grill. Where we built a coal bed using limbs, branches, small items, and then we cooked off of that that's an option now in SHTF all that smoke is gonna draw attention however everybody's gonna be burning and cooking outside they're not gonna have operations of their stove inside their house they're not gonna have a working microwave so you're gonna see a lot of fire pits stuff like that outside people's homes okay so now we're gonna sit there and cook off get down to coals before we can even start cooking our food all that food in the refrigerator, guys, is going to have to get cooked up really quick. Um, you will see a lot of people cooking outdoors. You'll see a lot of people trying to cook indoors and set a blaze to their homes. Die from carbon monoxide poison, smoke inhalation. Do not cook inside your house with a gas stove or charcoal. Bad idea. So what's so wrong about being outside and cooking, guys? Absolutely nothing in normal times during an EMP You're out here cooking You got to have somebody watching your back If you're out here in the front yard backyard all the smoke Producing people smelling this meat cook It's not gonna be really good for you If you're out here by yourself and other people start smelling this you will have a crowd show up and they will show up So guys, you've got to have somebody watching your back during a grid down situation. The fact is, there is just too many people not prepared. Do I want to get on the bandwagon and say, oh, everyone's going to try to take your stuff? I don't want to. But the fact is, if you're hungry enough, people do a lot of things. Especially since there won't be rule of law. They will take what they want or try to. All right, guys. So while other vehicles will not be running due to an EMP, we have the ability to crank and run our truck. The reason why we have the ability to crank our truck after an EMP is that we do have EMP shield installed on our vehicle guys all right so the question pops up what good is a working vehicle going to do you without fuel without motor oil basic parts and stuff that you need to keep this vehicle running the vehicle is not going to run forever it's going to run when we need it and for however long we immediately need it we keep fuel on hand I don't film our fuel stocks the reason why I don't film our fuel stocks I believe this is going to be the most sought after commodity when an EMP first starts right after an EMP hits people's gonna be looking for fuel now granted there'll be a lot of vehicles not running but there will be some vehicles that are running the predated ones without all the electronics they'll still run but you'll have generators that will be running people will be looking for fuel propane so gasoline is something we keep store and we hide very well. We don't keep it right on hand where it's easy access and if we get overrun or we have to move, we don't have it where it's just easily seen. All right, something to think about storing fuel. Now I will say check your local laws right now on fuel storage. You don't want to get hemmed up before this happens check your local laws guys be law-abiding as much as possible right now don't film doing anything illegal or anything stupid you do not want to be in the hooski when this stuff goes down all right you want to be with your family or be able to get to your family when this happens now along to help us with outside security we have our outside lights we also have game trail cameras that we can set up and review later 
but we also have motion detectors. This way we notify us when something's moving around in the yard with a simple bong. All right, so you see we have the aid of ghillie suits. Ghillie suits is a good idea, especially if you're doing defense around your property or whatever it is that you are trying to secure. Having these ghillie suits, this here is an Amazon ghillie suit. This is not the ones that are the old school ones made out of burlap and things like that. This is actually decently priced. Uh, my brother turned me on to these. These are actually pretty good, but it helps displaces you in foliage around you things like that so having ghillie seats for a security detail is a pretty good idea especially if you are sitting back and you're working as overwatch or something like that these um, ghillie seats work real nicely granted though you're gonna have to train for discipline once you're in position you need to stay in position does that mean uh, you get to go take bathroom breaks well you get to use the restroom but you're uh, doing it right there sounds disgusting talk with anybody that's ever worked overwatch and worked as a sniper team they're basically urinating themselves all right there it is so guys it doesn't take much to actually blend in especially when you start changing your foliage on your ghillie suits it does not take much to uh, blend into your environment now with the old burlap ones you to take your uh, materials around your area and that's what you tie up onto your suit but like I said does not take much and with dedication of being still you blend in behind everything So as you can see guys, having the ability to blend in your surrounding is definitely key when you're having to pull security details, things like that. So yeah, ghillie suits are nice. It's an idea to have. I mean, we're talking about EMPs, guys. Grid down situation. Let me slide this up. All right guys, so as you can see, these things work really well. I do like the idea of using ghillie suits and your preps, all right? Having these things for your security details. Guys, during the daytime, that's when people's gonna be moving around and if you're cooking stuff like that during the daytime, you need to have security teams in place. If it's just you and your family, think about something like this. This, this helps blend in people. Now, if you got somebody in one of these sitting up as Overwatch with a good quality rifle, they're watching everything around, all right? They are in position. Nobody knows they're there. So if someone does come, you have that surprise. It's a good idea. All right guys, so we also have water pumps. All right, this is the 12 volt system. Uh, we've shown videos on this. Um, this is what we plan on using in Wyoming to pump water. Having a way to move water, it's gonna be a smart idea during SHTF, especially with an EMP. One thing, getting hold of water, purifying water for drinking. What about transferring water for bathing, especially when you have large tubs of collected rainwater whatever it is you're using your water for or storage these things here are actually pretty cool to have like I said this is works out of a 12 volt system um, I just clipped the wire off just so I can show you this is easier to hold in hand and this thing here 
uh, according to the instruction manuals and everything else with this particular brand and no, I'm not selling you this I'm just telling you about it it's got a six foot lift all right so this thing here to, to move water around it's gonna be a good idea to actually have um, water itself is something you need to survive all right you got to think beyond just drinking water you need to have access to water water stores for bathing sanitary for uh, using the restroom getting rid of that water the wastewater and you also need water for washing dishes you need water all right having a way to move water is going to be a very smart move on your survival so as you can see guys you can't see much out here and we even have moon out tonight so luckily though, we do have the aid of our studio light here and yes we have our night vision we got some footage for y'all with night vision. All right, being able to see what's going on, what's moving around outside, something you want to invest in. This one here, we paid like a hundred bucks for. There are other models. I just recently seen a newer model. Use the same technology, G generation one. It was like 70 bucks. I saw it on another channel. It has a USB, um, no, it's got an SD card that you can insert in for recording. Which is pretty cool. This one here is plain Jane. It does not have that recording skill, uh, ability, or anything like that. But have a night vision so you can see. Well, you can see people like me out and about. All right, yes, I do have a ghillie suit on. Without the aid of the light, you can't tell. All right, lights are out. As I said, without the aid of the studio light, you can't see me. Without the aid of a flashlight, you're not going to be able to see me. Let's check out the night vision. All right, so there's our tripod. We've got some, I've got another light down there. Look at the difference and not being able to see at all. Back of the solar panel system. And the good thing about night vision is that you're not giving away your position by using a flashlight. Alright guys, so that is our night vision. I do apologize if it's not the perfect night vision footage. Unfortunately, it is generation one. We bought it on a budget. Um, taking the GoPro and trying to hold it up against the eyepiece while focusing in and walking around can be difficult it'll start moving around stuff like that trying to do the combination of both but we we're able to get some footage out there now these things here this particular one takes double a batteries now we have rechargeable double a batteries that way we have a way of constantly keeping power for our night vision rechargeable batteries only last for so many recharges okay so we have many of those but the life of them we don't really know how long they'll last but we do keep those if we can just charge them up using our solar system use the USB port on our charge station plug it in we're good to go so it's an idea for you guys alright instead of storing up a whole bunch of batteries those rechargeable batteries are pretty nice they don't last as long for duration but total time the rechargeables are great again guys get some flashlights I reason I like night vision so I don't give away my, my position while using these now I've heard in the past, well, if you have generation one night vision, you could easily be spotted using the such and such type of scope and then they will kill you. They're a death sentence. I don't think 
the redneck down the road from me has a specific IR camera that can pick up my night vision. If he does, okay. I hear so much crap. No matter what you come out with and try to show, well, that's not going to work. The U.S. military's got this, blah, blah, blah. U.S. military's got a lot of great stuff. I know this for a fact, okay? There's a lot of stuff that even you haven't heard about. And the fact is, I'm not expecting the U.S. military to kick down my door for my last can of pork and beans. This is for our survival in the community. I'm not, I have no dreams of taking on a armed force of tanks. I don't know where people get this idea. I'll tell you right now, man. Good luck. Good luck. And of course, guys, we can't forget candles. I knew someone was going to say it, so here you go. Alright, so now we've shown multiple different ways of creating electricity and living off of off-the-grid using solar, wind turbine generators. We showed you the appliances and stuff that we use here in our trailer. This is something that's mobile. This is something we can generate electricity anywhere we are. Uh, the question may arise, well, if an EMP happens, what keeps your systems from frying? That's where EMP shield comes in. We have EMP shield equipped on a trailer, which is part of our solar array. So anything that's going to be going through there has to go through that EMP shield before it comes here. Main reason is because we are not hooked up on a standard normal fuse box like a house or anything like that. Everything we have built is wired in and fused in on a 12 volt system. The only AC current we have is what comes out of our inverter. So having our EMP shield on our solar system keeps this protected here. So basically in here we have our own Faraday cage. The only thing is we can only store so much. Now do we have extras of things? Yeah. The refrigerator, we have another one of those. It's in a Faraday cage in storage. I don't have another coffee pot. I have a percolator I can use. Uh, we don't have another DVD player and a uh, another TV. We have tablets, stuff like that, with SD cards loaded down with movies and music videos and music, which is in a Faraday cage. Um, we have an air condition that we put in the back door there. So we have air conditioning during the daytime up to four hours at night. Uh, we have electric heater. That way we can generate heat during the daytime if we need it and up to so many hours at night. Those heaters take a lot of power. Unfortunately, we have to extend our battery banks to accommodate that. Currently, we're roughly four, four hours at night with that heater. But what we've done in here, we've re-insulated all the walls, re-insulated the floor. That actually stays pretty comfortable in here. Um, would I recommend going to below zero temperatures with this trailer? Definitely not.